Hey there, four states. This is Luke Taylor, and welcome to your KNEO Community Connection. And uh, we got some exciting stuff to tell you about today. We have two guests with us in the studios here at KNEO. We have Chris Reed, and she is the director for the local Habitat for Humanity. I also have uh, Kent Farnsworth with us here. He's on the board for Habitat for Humanity. They both come out to the station to tell us about the organization. And also, you want to make sure you're tuned in because there's a special event coming up that they're going to be putting on in October. But first, hey, welcome to both of you two for coming out here to KNEO. Thank, Thank you. you. Maybe we should just start with talking about Habitat for Humanity because you all were telling me about that a few minutes ago and just all the value it brings to the local citizens who really need services like this. Um, maybe I'll start with Chris Reed here. To mm-hmm. Tell us about uh, what Habitat for Humanity does. Habitat provides homes for people who uh, need safe and affordable housing. Uh, they go through a process um, to apply for these homes and then if they are selected, they then put in sweat equity hours to help build the homes. Oh, so they're involved with the building of the homes, yes. too. Mm-hmm. Okay. So then they're involved with the whole process, and that probably develops more of an appreciation for what the homes can provide. We hope so, yes. Yeah. Yeah, and so uh, and Dr. Kent Farnsworth is here with us too. Uh, you were you were telling me also a little bit earlier about uh, some of the process of like someone purchasing this home to live in long term. Can, can you tell us about that? Well, that's right. The houses are purchased rather than given to the to the applicants, and um, we qualify them so that we know that they can afford to buy the home. Although, in order to qualify, they can't be eligible for a traditional uh, mortgage. Mm-hmm. Um, and we sell it to them uh, on a no-interest basis, usually a 30-year loan, and it makes it affordable to them pro- generally at less than they're paying for rent wherever they're living right now. Mm-hmm. Um, if they happen to move before the house is paid off, then they get back what they've put into the home in terms of payments over time and some interest, uh, but the rest of the equity comes back to Habitat. Mm-hmm. Once they've paid the home off completely, then they own it, and, they, and all the equity belongs to them. So mm-hmm. it's a great way for a family to become homeowners and, and really establish themselves as a solid member of our community. Mm. Yeah, so um, for you, Chris Reed, day-to-day, what, what does your... Um workload look like as far as you know are, are people coming in to <laughs> to ask about getting on a list or something like that or what what, what kind of things do you deal with day to day well there's no predictable day that's mm. for sure um i spend time writing grants seeking out um sources for um donations we put together fundraisers uh we coordinate things to be purchased for the house that's being built we have a project manager and we have volunteers who help build the houses so it's you know just running the office and um hopefully doing that successfully Mm -hmm. okay yeah well i'm sure there's a lot to keep up with because you all have what what were you saying 17 or 18 homes in the local area yes we have 16 that are currently owned by people, the residents of the community, and two that are under construction. Mm-hmm. Two under construction. One should be finished about next month, we hope. So. And one by another one by the end of the year. And and there was uh, you were telling me also about this uh, ICF construction of the homes, and, and there was a write-up in the paper recently about that, too. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, these two homes are, are, are built out of what they call insulated concrete forms. Uh, they're sort of like giant Lego blocks with a couple of inches of styrofoam on each either side of an, of an open block, which is then filled with uh, reinforced concrete. And so the walls are seven, nine inches thick. Uh, it's a small fortress, really. Mm-hmm. I live in an ICF home. They're extremely efficient, and that's one of the reasons that we've built them that way this year. Um, get good windows in them and good insulation in the attic, and it also mm-hmm. saves the homeowner a considerable amount of money in terms of a utility costs over time. Okay, so it's really energy efficient. Yes. And, yeah, and, and probably pretty strong, too. Yes. And yeah. generally, they've they've cost about 15% more than a traditional stick-built home, but because of the pandemic and the cost of materials, mm. it turned out that during this last couple of years, the costs have been about the same. Yeah, yeah and... And I'm sure you all have like a process that's really streamlined and we're able to put these homes together. But it is uh, it's probably one of the hardest things to find is like land or places to, to put new homes up. Well, it's a, we've been lucky. Um, sometimes we have donors who will donate land. Mm. But we have um, – it is hard to find property that, you know, Habitat can acquire. Mm-hmm. And we've worked with the city in the past year or so to identify lots 
that may have homes that are condemned, mm-hmm. and we are able to go in and work with the city to um, purchase that that land. Um, where we're building the two houses now, that used to be the last um, area of land from the 1800s that had not been divided, and we were able to get that, fix it, you know, fix the lot, mm-hmm. and then divide it for two houses. Okay. Okay. Well, it sounds like you guys are doing some great work at Habitat for Humanity. And um, you mentioned also fundraisers a few minutes ago. You have a a really big one coming up that I think a lot of people will be interested in. It's going to be on October 24th. And tell us about this one. We have a policy. Uh, it's it's an informal policy. But we like to have the money for the house before we start it. Mm-hmm. And so we've been trying to come up with a, a fundraising event that will be more than just a couple thousand dollars in terms of return to Habitat. Mm-hmm. And we thought that with the new Performing Arts Center in town... Um, it would be great if we could get a nationally known group to come in here and perform. And so we looked at who was coming to Branson between now and the end of the year, and one of the names that caught our attention was Ernie Haas and Signature Sound. Um, they were selected in 2021 and as the, the top go- Southern Gospel Artists of the Year, and in 2022 had the top album, and so that naturally caught our attention. Mm-hmm. They are coming to Branson on the 25th of October, and we gave them a call and said, how would you like to swing by Neosho on your way? Mm -hmm. And much to our surprise and delight, um, they said, yes, that sounds kind of a fun thing for us to do. so on October 24th at 7 p.m., uh, Ernie Haas and Signature Sound will be kicking off probably the first outside professional performance in the new Performing Arts Center with right. a concert of gospel music and some some of their favorite uh, love ballads of the last several decades. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this this gets to put that new, uh, the Freeman Performing Arts Center to the test because it's their, they're going to be one of their first big shows they ever have. And um, a group of this quality, I mean, even if someone says the Southern Gospel is not really their thing but when, when you're talking about a group of this caliber you're in for a real treat when you come out to a show like this i put a, a note on facebook uh, a week or so ago and a friend in virginia sent me an email and said how did you get Ernie haas to come to neo show right uh, she obviously doesn't know what a draw neo show is mm-hmm. but uh, obviously a very well-known group nationally and, and one that people look forward to going to hear yeah yeah no absolutely uh, the, definitely popular uh, the, the people in our in our listenership here for kneo are going to be familiar with Ernie Haas and Signature Sound, and we've had them on the radio for years and years, and so a lot of people will be excited to know that they're coming right here to a local area. Um, If people are interested in this concert, it's October 24th. It's going to start at 7 p.m. Where should people go to find out ticket information? Well, uh, we're selling tickets out of our office here in Neosho, which is uh, in the the Methodist uh, Christian Life Center. Uh, which is on Highway 49 North going out of town. Um, We have tickets available between 10 and 12.30 every day, Monday through Thursday, so they can stop by there. Or they can buy them at our Facebook site online by going to our Facebook site, which is Facebook slash Neosho Habitat. And there will be a link there that will take them directly to a place to buy them online. Uh, The tickets are $25, and... uh, that's a real bargain for hearing this yeah. group. Well, it'd be great if they could get them reserved. And I, I think you said you'd be selling tickets at the door as well, but if people see these posters around town, mm-hmm. they can pull out their phone and like scan the, the poster right there, and it takes them right to the ticket information, doesn't it? That's right. Within the next couple of weeks, we'll be putting posters all over town. Um, if I were uh, thinking about this, I would buy my ticket in advance because... We can't be sure we'll have tickets at the door. We will if we have seats, um, but we strongly encourage people to get tickets in advance. Okay. Well, hey, that's that's great. So Ernie Haas and Signature Sound, they're going to be at the Freeman Performing Arts Center. That's the new addition there at the Neosho High School. It's going to be at 7 p.m. on October 24th. And this is going to be a, a great fundraiser for Habitat for Humanity and hopefully help them to take several steps forward in the construction of new homes to help the citizens of our area. Hey, Kent Farnsworth, and Chris Reed. Thanks so much for joining us today and and talking about what you all do. Our pleasure. Thank you. Do you have five minutes for God? I'm Pastor Ed Wilson, and I believe there's no better way to begin each morning than spending a little time with Him. That's why every weekday morning I bring you a short devotional broadcast designed just for that. 
Look up God's Five Minutes wherever you get your podcast to kickstart your spiritual walk for each day. We'll always do it in five minutes or less. Have you talked to God today?